Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks. And last weekend at Wargaming Fest, the World of Tanks team outlined the changes that they want to make to the game in 2019. And in today's video, I'm going to outline exactly what you have to look forward to if you're a World of Tanks player over the next year, specifically what I think about the changes that they're suggesting, and whether I think they're actually going to fix the issues with World of Tanks. So immediately, here's a big one, premium ammo rebalancing. And you all know if you watched my previous video of how I'd fix World of Tanks, I didn't think it was going to be something that is actually possible. So firstly, Wargaming kick off by suggesting that because they've removed the ability to purchase premium ammunition with gold, that it should no longer be called gold rounds or premium ammo, they should be called special ammo. However, I'd like to immediately disagree with this, because the only way that you can afford to fire gold rounds, premium rounds, special ammo, is either with a premium account, or alternatively, if you have premium tanks. And unless you've had no life over a, a two or a three week period and managed to do one of Wargaming's mission marathons, then the only way to be able to get those two things is with gold, and the only way to get gold in the amount to be able to purchase those things is with a credit card. So just because you can't purchase gold rounds for gold anymore doesn't mean that you don't still need to have a lot of gold if you want to fire them in a plentiful supply like a lot of people are doing in the game right now. So how do Wargaming want to balance out the fact that just because you spend four times the credits you're going to be able to have higher penetration? Well what they want to do is they want to reduce the damage output of special ammo, premium rounds, gold rounds, whatever you want to call them, by 25 to 30 percent. Okay, not exactly a novel idea. People have been debating whether it would be a good thing for the game for absolute years. So if you've watched my previous video, you'll know my upcoming opinion, and that is that if you just nerf the damage of the premium rounds, then that means that all lightly armored ta tanks stay the same, but all the heavily armored tanks in the game just get flat out better. So Wargaming have apparently recognized this, and they say they are very well aware that these changes will significantly affect some tanks, but don't worry, all vehicles will be evaluated individually on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm sorry, I really don't trust you, Wargaming, to rebalance all of the vehicles in your game based on how much they get hit by premium rounds and how much better their armor is going to be. Let me tell you exactly where the problem of premium rounds has come from. And that is that you buffed super heavy tanks and all other vehicles practically to have enough armor so that standard rounds had no chance of penetrating and so you only can penetrate something like a mouse or a type 5 heavy at least reliably frontally with a premium round. And so everybody does it and all that you're going to do by nerfing the damage that the premium round does is just make the those tanks more durable. It's not going to be less frustrating for the player to be constantly penetrated. They're just going to die slightly slower. And I truly hope that Wargaming are going to reduce the cost of the premium rounds as well. Otherwise, it's just going to be more money that you have to spend in the game against those unbalanced, super heavily armored tanks with no weak points frontally to be able to take them down. I, I, I truly hope that Wargaming understand what a gigantic gigantic undercoming this will be, you are effectively going to have to rebalance every single tank with good armor in your game, because this is going to be an absolute slap in the face to everybody out there who isn't driving around an Object 268 version 4, who isn't driving around a Type 5 Heavy or a Mouse. And while I personally like the idea of making standard rounds more attractive in terms of cost and damage, as this will introduce some more skill into World of Tanks, it's not enough. You need to give super heavily armored tanks weak points again. Reward the players who bother to go out of their way to learn about weak points on the enemy vehicles and stop removing them from the game as you have been doing in the last few years. And one thing I'd like to question is why Wargaming has suggested that they've put a lot of work into these improvements and they're excited to hear what we think. What, so just reducing the damage per shot by a flat 25 to 30 percent is, is a lot of work, is it? Well, in my opinion, that's quite a stretch. I think all of the work is going to be trying to rebalance just practically all of the armor in your game if you make these changes. So next up, let's talk about the matchmaker. And firstly, Wargaming kind of try, in my opinion, try and distract us from the actual problem. And they talk about some really archaic things. Fail platoons removed. Okay, great. So you have to sign up with people of the same tier. A large number of SPGs in the teams. Okay, so you limited the number of SPGs in each team to three. Great. And next they suggest that people were annoyed about the fact that sometimes you ended up in battles where there were 13 tier 10s and only two tier 8s. Well, in my opinion, that happened so infrequently that it was not even a significant issue. They suggest that the template system was to fix all of this. No, hell no. The template system didn't fix fail platoons. It didn't fix the large number of SPGs in each team. All it really did was cock it up by putting 357 matchmaking in, which is one of the most stupid ideas ever. Next, they suggest that after the introduction of the template system, the bat battles became more acceptable. No, I, I totally disagree. Maybe it was acceptable at first for the tier 10 players, but then suddenly everybody stopped bothering to play tier 8 in anything but a 
an overpowered tier 8 premium because those are the only things that com could, could compete in all the tier 9 and tier 10 games they were getting into. Next they finally recognize this and that is that players very rarely get matched with their own tier, one tier or two tiers below and also that all preferential premiums always get matched up in the 510 template against tier 9 and tier 10 tanks. So how are they going to fix this? Well basically they're going to be adding in new templates. There are going to be the new 6-9 matchup, the 7-8 matchup and also there's going to be 4-5-6 and even 5-5-5. Five, five, five. All right, this is a real big step in the right direction. You're allowing your matchmaker to see what the, the pyramid of tanks that have signed up are and then making the best possible games out of them. This sounds absolutely great in my opinion as long as the focus is still on 456 or 555 and it's not focused on 6978 or even all tier matchmaking. As I'm getting really fed up of Wargaming just constantly stripping away the variety in World of Tanks and changing the core concept which was the whole reason why their game became popular in the first place. The only thing I'd like to really critique here is why has it taken a year and a half to, to do this? We've been suggesting this for years. Wargaming, please react to our feedback quicker because you're literally allowing your game to hemorrhage players in between you assessing the problem, recognizing it, and then you, you create a solution that we've been talking about for months or even not years. And then Wargaming summarized this by putting it simply that they would like players to be top of the list more often. That's great, but please don't make that your focus. Make it so that you middle once top ones and bottom ones. Try and get that as close to 33% as possible, obviously still working with the amount of players that are playing at the separate tiers. That's what World of Tanks used to be like and what it, it should be like as soon as possible. Next, let's talk about something that I think everybody is going to be happy about, and that is the return of Frontline. It's coming back in the first quarter of 2019. This kind of worries me, the fact that Wargaming is saying in the first quarter here, but that they're not really talking about in the first quarter for all of the other things. So I guess this is one thing that they realize that everybody's really excited for. So what are the changes? Well, Frontline is going to kick off every calendar month and it will be available for one week. Wow, so one out of four weeks of the month, you're going to be able to play Frontline. Sounds great to me. That should be enough to keep it interesting, keep it varied without feeling like it's just available all the time and you get burnt out doing it. And next, they're suggesting it's going to be progressive as it's going to last for 10 weeks total. They're also adding more prestige levels, increasing the prestige levels from 3 till 10. Wow, I hope you've got some rewards that are available. With the increased prestige level added gradually with each of the frontline weeks and there will also be no strict timeline for reaching the prestige. So for example if you miss a week then the next month when you play during the frontline week I, I guess you could do two prestiges if you want to try and keep up. And in addition to this players will be rewarded with special points for reaching a prestige level and you can use these points to purchase special reward vehicles and the availability of these special tanks will be added gradually as you reach certain prestige levels. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in. I'm, I'm already playing. Let's do it. And they top it all off by saying that apparently experience and credit earning rates will remain the same in next year's front lines and repair and shell costs won't change either. So if you loved the economy of the previous front line, then you're going to love the economy of the next front line. The only thing uh, feedback wise I'd like to give Wargaming is that Please keep in mind that when you do run events like this, that it massively changes the health of your random matchmaker. If you take all of one tier and put them into a special game mode, then the, the tiers above them, let's just imagine that Frontline is for tier 8 again, then all of the, the tier 9 and tier 10 matchmaking will be bad, but all of the, the, the 6 and the 7 matchmaking will be good. And so what I would suggest you do Wargaming is to alleviate this, give the tier 8s that want to sign up in the random queue a bonus as well during that week to try and keep the health of the matchmaker better and to reward both players who enjoy your front line and also players who don't really care about your front line. So next up, Wargaming want to talk about vehicle rebalancing. This year they've been actively working on vehicle rebalancing, adding new tanks and removing some old ones, and now they're ready to take the next step. So they suggest they're going to improve the vehicles that will be most affected by the rebalancing of special ammunition, and also they're going to focus on vehicles with poor efficiency and overhaul some overpowered tanks to revise their characteristics. All right, so the following vehicles will be rebalanced first. The E100, the IS-4, the Leopard-1, the STB-1, and the Kranvang. Okay, um, I personally thought the Kranvang and the STB-1 are in a pretty good position right now. I, I would argue that the Leopard-1 definitely needs some love along with the IS-4, and I, I feel the E-100's in a pretty good position, so I'll be very interested to see what Wargaming have to do with all of these tech trees. Do you know what I really feel like that they want to do with the rebalancing is that they want to just tune them up a little bit so they make them more exciting tech trees for you guys to go and grind down so you keep wanting to 
get lots of tanks. And there's no harm in that. I, I would just argue that, that Wargaming have really missed what kind of vehicle rebalancing they should be doing. So Wargaming, hopefully watch my last video. Here's, here's a list for you. Get rid of these things right now or just nerf them. And all, also these things as well. These are completely toxic at low tier. And so while this is definitely exciting times if you've got any of these vehicles or all of them and you're looking forward to inevitably having them buffed in the upcoming year, this isn't the vehicle rebalancing that we really need Wargaming. Next up, something that's really exciting for me and that is that they're planning on introducing some new vehicles. And while they have no concrete plans for a new nation, 2019 will mark the arrival of Swedish medium tanks. And that apparently they're also experimenting with mechanic settings for the Swedish tanks because they'd love to make the switch to siege mode automatic. So it looks like there's more siege mode tanks coming to World of Tanks, possibly even some medium ones. And when I have more information about it, I'm going to update you. But definitely, that's one thing that Wargaming always do well. When they add interesting tech trees at the most important times of the year, we always respond positively. That's why we play this game, because Wargaming have created this incredible title with a whole variety of tanks inside it. And while there are always going to be people who are unhappy when new tanks are added because they're not historical and they didn't actually exist in World War II. For the overall health and longevity of the game, it's something that has to keep happening, and it's nice to know that Wargaming are pl still planning new tech trees. Next up, Wargaming are hinting that there are going to be new quality mechanics that they will add to the game, and it's too early to showcase any concept because they're still working on them, but the efforts will be going on in 2019. Okay, that's about as, as, as useless as a chocolate teapot in a bit of a hype video. You're, so you're testing some new graphics mechanics. Okay, great. Everybody knows how little of an impact 1.0 really has in bringing old players back to the game or even keeping your old players still playing it. And it's just sad that what must have been an absolute huge, tremendous amount of effort just didn't really have the impact that I guess Wargaming wanted this year in, in March. Now Wargaming is suggesting there are going to be another ranked battle season and they're going to mix it up a little bit. So they're going to have four different divisions. Each division has 15 ranks, but it's going to be easier to climb up. And apparently once you get into each division, you can't fall out of it. And hopefully that's going to make the, the bronze, uh, silver, gold grind a little bit easier, a little bit harder. We'll just have to see what happens. Personally, I really like the rank battles. I think it's nice when it comes back roughly every three to six months for a few weeks and it's, it's fun to play as a bit of a, a change, a bit of variety, and then when it's over, you just go back into the regular stuff. I think that Wargaming are really thinking well about adding in events like ranked battles and also now in front lines that's going to be a regular occurrence on the server to just break up the mundane world of tanks grind. And if you don't want to do it, you don't have to. The, the random queue isn't going away during it. Next up, Clan Wars. In January 2019, there is going to be an upcoming event for players in clans to receive a new British reward tank, the t 95 f FV4201 Chieftain. But this isn't the Chieftain that I know all of you are thinking about, but I've had a quick look on Tanks GG and in the interest of keeping this video short, it does look like it's going to be a hold down monster, but stay tuned to the channel as I'll, I'll try to do a full review on it, even though I won't get my hands on one myself. All right, next up, Wargaming talk about the Bond Shop and that this year we completely reworked the in-game shop. Players now have the opportunity to purchase items, equipment directed for Bonds, and in 2019 they want to add the ability to purchase tanks for Bonds. Hey, fantastic! That's great stuff. And apparently they're planning to put vehicles on sale that are not currently available in the premium shop but are present in the game. And these tanks include gift tanks and vehicles that have been removed from the tank tree but are still owned by players. Okay, so clearly FV215B183, FOSH155 and the FV215B. All tanks that really not many people really want to play right now because their standard counterparts are better but I, I guess for tank collectors out there it's going to be a good opportunity. And they plan to add vehicles to the Bond shop in two rounds. The first slot will appear in the spring of 2019 and will include more affordable vehicles and the second one will contain more exclusive tanks that will go on sale in the second half of 2019. It's a long time to wait. And in addition they're discussing the possibility of adding other goodies and specials to the Bonds and to plan to gradually increase the sources of bonds in the game and so on. Fantastic stuff, Wargaming. This is great. But do you know what isn't great? The fact that you can still spend bonds on things that can just make you a better tanker. You can just make your tank 2-3% to 3 better. Just get rid of it. Remove the improved equipment. Do you know why? Because now you're going to have to Bonds are going to be so sought after that you're basically going to be giving players a, a choice of do you want to make your current tanks better or do you want to be able to get rare exclusive tanks? It just feels like a, a lose-lose choice for the player. As I recommended in my previous video, I would just get rid of bond equipment. There's, there's no place for it in the game. 
It just makes the best players better, remove it, refund all the players, and just make bonds a special currency to purchase ultra rare tanks. Make it a sought after currency that is never sold for money, but is given for player effort and exceptional player achievements in the game a lot like it is now and allow people to spend it on ultra rare skins or ultra rare tanks and not make players feel like because they want to get those two things they have to sacrifice their competitiveness of their vehicles. Moving on, Wargaming talk about a premium account and that apparently in 2019 they will bring truly fundamental change to the premium account and the current version has been around for more than eight years and some of its features are no longer as important to players as they used to be. For example, personal reserves offer similar and sometimes even better bonuses. They're apparently planning on increasing the profit and convenience of having a premium account and while they're still working on nailing down the specifics, the ultimate goal is to make the premium account more affordable, sorry, not more affordable, but more profitable and most importantly, more convenient for everyone. Okay, kind of news, but also kind of nothing news there. I, I don't think that really the problem with World of Tanks in 2018 was a premium account. And I feel like at the end of the list here, they're not even suggesting things that are really fixing to the problem, fixing problems in World of Tanks. They're just suggesting things that they, they want to do. So they want to add more unique styles. Great. Okay, great. This, is, this isn't this is anything absolutely nailed down or, or interesting. And then apparently there's a tank race. They're going to bring a very special treat in 2019, an incredible tank race. All right. And then they've got this classified video here. And, and it's just bizarre to me that they've got a classified video here. So they're kind of suggesting that they're going to hint about things that are coming up. Let, let's just watch the video now and you can see the gravity of the situation. All right, Wargaming HQ. What, what's happening in Wargaming HQ? Okay. Should they make the Sixth Sense perk available for everyone? This is very interesting because everything's got question marks. And so I guess they're debating whether they want to do this. You know what? I think that would be a good change, but I don't think that's necessary a necessary change to roll out amongst the mid tiers and the top tiers. If you want to do it at the low tiers, I think that would be a great place to do it because all the new players need every advantage they can get against the filthy seal clubbers. But Wargaming, let me tell you, if you want to give the Sixth Sense perk to everyone, I am going to want a refund for all of the free experience that you have encouraged me to spend on my commanders to be able to get Sixth Sense on the tank instantly. And before other people say, oh, it was your choice, it was your choice, I, I'll be damned if Wargaming have not encouraged you to convert free experience and then to boost it into your commander during special events where you get 10 times the experience rather than five. And so I hope they realize that they better be giving everybody who has boosted free experience into their commander a refund if they plan on making this change. All right, next up, what are they wanting to do? Hide statistics and tank names? Well, this literally is like a bombshell coming in right now. Okay, so for me, this would be brilliant. Uh, this would, I, I, I bet you my win rate, my enjoyment of the game, everything is going to, to skyrocket. But trying to think objectively as if I'm not uh, the most famous player on the European server who's more focused by artillery and more focused by YOLO rushes than, than anyone out there. Is this going to be a good change or is this going to be a negative change? Well, I can't really think of another massive multiplayer online game that I play where you cannot see th the player name that you're playing against. Is this going to dehumanize the game? Isn't that part of the fun of playing multiplayer online games? The fact that you can see that there's, there's a player who you played against in the previous round at this time maybe you can have your revenge against him hiding statistics as well I, 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 this is bizarre for me because every other multiplayer game that i play you get an idea of player skill by holding down your tab key or, or looking at the information think about it in league of legends when you're loading into the battle you can see what league the player or each player on the enemy team got into are they a diamond player are they a gold player are they a bronze player who are the more experienced players on the enemy team in overwatch you can see exactly what level every player is on the enemy team and even mobile games like clash royale allow you to see how many trophies the other player has got showing you in real time their position on the ladder this whole xvm focus shenanigans in world of tanks while it definitely does happen people just absolutely love to use it as an excuse as to why bad things happen to them Next up, hot in August, an online slash offline tank festival. Well, I, I guess that'll be good for the RU region, probably going to be some kind of concert in Minsk, but for the EU region, not really very interesting. Blacklisted maps. Okay, whoa, this is starting to get really scary now. All right, it is a good idea that if, for example, you could say, I don't want, you can, you can check two different maps or maybe three different maps that you don't want to play out of, uh, out of the map pool. Well, all right. 
that would instantly make it a lot better to play artillery, right? You won't be playing artillery on Himmelsdorf. You won't be playing artillery on, on Paris or Ensk. And also, you're probably not going to want to load into Prokhorovka or Malinovka in your T-95 or your Yankpanzeri 100. Light tanks are going to avoid city maps. They're going to try and focus on getting on Prokhorovka and Malinovka. But... Pff, do you know what the, the problem with this is going to be? Is that it's going to standardize the kind of tanks that you see on all of the maps. No longer are you going to be that medium tank that spawns on Himmelsdorf and rubs its hands at the fact that there's three artillery on the enemy team and you make it your mission to be able to go and hunt them. Nor are you going to be the light tank that spawns on Prokhorovka and sees three type 5 heavies on the enemy team that you have a lovely opportunity to be able to catch out and spot for your artillery. By enabling specific tanks to blacklist maps, you're going to make it less fun for, for when you get the ideal situation for your tank. And in addition to this, is this not going to increase the computation power that your matchmaker requires? Surely we're going to want to try and get queue times down in World of Tanks as the player base dwindles, instead of creating whole new opportunities for there to be issues. All right, friendly fire. Wow, well, this is a, an interesting one. I, I'm probably shot again more than anyone is. The amount of players who, who shoot me just in the battle just randomly because I guess they're just idiots or they want to try and be noticed because they're some kind of insignificant nothing is immensely frustrating. But if I try and think about this objectively, how often does friendly fire really happen? Is it a big issue in World of Tanks? And how are they going to stop artillery players from just shooting into a situation? If you just flat out remove all friendly fire in World of Tanks, all that is going to happen is an IS-7 is going to go and face hug. he's going to sign up in a platoon with artillery, and his two artillery buddies are going to fire in against the enemy tank, lock you down, and the IS-7 is going to take no damage in return. One thing that Wargaming could do on the other hand is make players go blue more quickly. Why is it that sometimes in the battle you can get shot by the same player twice and they don't go blue? This is beyond me. All right, next up they want to develop the battle results and session statistics concept. Okay, great stuff. That's not controversial. Do it. That sounds absolutely awesome. Yeah, I'd like to see an idea of how well I'm doing over a specific session. But on the other hand, I also don't really want to know how I've been doing in the session because every other game that's happened before doesn't really matter. The only game that matters is the one that I'm about to play. It doesn't matter what has happened previously, you just hopefully have learned from it, and it's all about this game that you're going into, and you've got to try and do as well as you can in that one. And so that's it. It's hilarious to me that they've got this classified files video about things that they're thinking about they want to change. I guess the idea of this video is to create discourse to try and find out about community feedback about do you want to see these kind of changes going into the game or not. These aren't things that they've clarified they're going to do in 2019. These are things that they're clearly thinking about. And so have Wargaming addressed all of the things that I brought up in my How I'd Fix World of Tanks video? Well, they haven't talked anything about the new player experience. In fact, they seem to be hell-bent on making it worse right now by putting overpowered premiums into it. They, yeah, they, they kind of have addressed the matchmaker. I'm, I'm very interested to see what will happen. I think 555 will be great. Overpowered premiums, nothing about this. Wargaming, please do something about these tanks because they're literally killing the health of your matchmaker. And every time that you sell them, you're making cheap profit now and you're, you're, you're going to hemorrhage players in the long term. No mention about the sales tactics they want to employ. No mention about overpowered tech tree tanks. No mention about weak points on enemy vehicles, simply that they're going to be effectively nerfing premium rounds, which consequently will buff the Type 5 Heavy. They have mentioned about front lines. Fantastic. I, epic. Great, great. Do it, Wargaming. Just make sure that it's not detrimental by to the random matchmaking queue. I suggest by giving bonuses to sign up in tier 8 tanks at the same time in the, in the random queue. They haven't talked about the economy, only that they want to try and buff the premium account. They kind of half talked about bonds, but they also didn't. I still think that the fact that bonds make the best players better is just a complete fallacy and it sounds it just needs to be removed to then allow us to actually spend bonds on epic skins and tanks. No mention about artillery and how they're more annoying than ever and while they have suggested a premium ammo change, I, 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 this is a thing that I am seriously worried about. The fact that Wargaming is so nonchalant in the way that they have suggested that they are going to be able to rebalance all of the vehicles in the game that are affected by this change. I don't think they realize how intrinsically their game is balanced around premium rounds and that if you nerf them and you don't nerf the mouse and the Type 5 Heavy and pretty much all of the Tier 10 Heavy tanks and you don't buff all of the medium tanks and all of the light tanks and arguably buff all of the lightly armored tank destroyers but nerf all of the heavily armored tank destroyers 
this 50% win ratio that we should try and strive to achieve in World of Tanks is going to be blown out the water and it's going to be the age of the Object 268 version 4 all over again. And so all in all, has this article made me now super hyped about what the future holds for World of Tanks in 2019? Well, let's just put it like this. I'm definitely a lot more happy than I was a couple of weeks ago. But on the other hand, I think that Wargaming is setting themselves up for a whole host of new problems and they're just still failing to address some of the things that they could do right now to literally secure the longevity of their title. Anyway, ladies and gents, this was a long one. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. But if you hated the video, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about all of the changes coming up in 2019. What things are you most looking forward to? And what do you think that Wargaming has missed out on? And of any of things that Wargaming have suggested, are they doing it in the wrong way? And you would suggest to make other changes. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.